right? How you doing? You're right. Good, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm on, uh, I'm on peg ten, just looking out over the lake. Sad. How's it looking? Yeah, I mean it's a bit. The water's obviously up, as we already knew, but uh, yeah, pegs looking all right. Water's looking all right. See the fish show on the far bank a couple of times, so that's a good sign. But uh, how, how far are you out? Uh, about ten minutes. Ten, 10 minutes. minutes. I'm just come off the M40, 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, well I'll have a walk up and have a look at Peg 9 and then I'll walk back to the car park and uh, you should be there by, by the time I get you. Sweet. Yeah, so you, you ready to kick start this season? Absolutely, mate. <laughs> right, see you shortly. After a long winter without fishing, we're finally back out on the bank doing the Gemini Carp Tackle Carp Interest collaboration. Today we're at Hunt Corner on the Linery Fisheries Complex. So this year we've been set a new challenge, Liam and Pete chase the UK 40. So this year we'll be tackling a lot of venues with 40 pound fish. Uh, as Liam said, we're on Hunt Corner today on this first session back. Something slightly different from last year is the team at Gemini have sent us an envelope out with a little game just to help who picks which swim. So we're just gonna get the envelope now, and uh, we haven't we haven't looked in the envelope yet. Still sealed. Yeah, it's still sealed. So hopefully it's nothing too challenging because we've only got the camera set up and no rods out. But I hope they've been kind to us. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> he stitched us up here. Swim Wes. selection competition, Hunt's Corner. Most press-ups in one minute. No girly press-ups allowed. Right. This will be fun in all the mud and... You, wanna go, you can go first. <laughs> so, I'll, I'll take you in. And they've got to be proper. I don't leave me standing here like this. I'm going to be plank there before right, I start. Three, two, one, well, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, Shattered seven, it, seven it. eight, nine, ten and a half. 11, <laughs> no, like 13, 14, <coughs> 33 is it? What time am I on? 40 seconds, 37, <sighs> I'll get to 40, 37 you're on 50 seconds, 38, 39, 40, oh, done. and you're on 56 oh. seconds done. Quite a lot of luck in this swim, I'll do anyway. Cheers, Wes. <laughs> Let me know when. I'll tell you when. I'm going to make you plank for a little bit first, like you did with me. Then I'll do something. Go. Forty. All right then. What do you want? I'll do. They weren't proper pesky, though. So we'll watch that back. My I was a lot lower than you. So. I ain't going to say one fair and square, I need to see that footage back first because I don't think you was getting down properly. I'm going to put that footage up right now. <laughs> but yeah, you've won, so yeah. where you go. I think I already know the answer, but where are you going? I am going to go in peg 10 on this uh, Hunt Corner Lake, purely because earlier when I arrived before Liam waiting for him, I sent a few fish show on the far side of the bank. So what I'm going to do is just going to get a quick Gemini tidy uh, rig that's pre-made. I'm going to put a pop-up on it, I'm going to send it out there just before I get set up and set the empire up. And then you're going to head off to number nine and do your bits. And then uh, we'll give you an update a bit later on. That's it, get yourself off to the loser's corner. Cheated. <sighs> what a stitch up. So he's definitely got me down in the uh, the muddiest part of the of the lake. As far as the water out there goes, I'm not too disappointed to be honest. I think I did want ten, but I've got a good bit of water out there in front of me, and I think I'll be able to get amongst them. So 
So as you just witnessed, I have won the swim picking challenge set by Gemini Carp Tackle, which has led me to being peg 10. Already said my reasons, seen a couple of fish earlier while I was waiting for Liam. But other than that, it's close to the car park and the swim seems to be in a better condition. So on my half, it's a win. Whether it becomes the best peg by the end of the session, who knows? But fingers crossed, we both have a good session and we can get some fish on the bank. Without waste any more time, I have just pulled out a Gemini Carp Tackle pre-made rig. I've gone for the Ronnie rig because I need it to be a little bit of a pop-up because I'm not sure what the bottom's going to be like. I've gone with a small pop-up to try and entice a bite and all I've had to do is add an anti-tangle sleeve to the rig. I'm going to attach this to my leg clip system and fire it out where those fish were showing and hopefully we can get off the mark before even the bib is up. I've got to try and get over there without slipping. <laughs> Tucked in close to the far margin, we're asking a few jump. So I left that rod out for about 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, nothing happened, so now I'm going to spend the next half an hour, say, letting about in my swim. See what sort of spots I can find. I'm going to use the edge of this, edge of this platform where the original peg was. So ideally I'm looking for a bit of gravel. Nice solid spot where I can put a couple of rods. Oh, so we got some gravel there. Seems quite quite big gravel bar actually. So we're back, 2024, new series, new target. This year it's going to be Liam and Pete hunting UK 40, which we know isn't going to be an easy task, but we're going to try and put ourselves on the best venues possible to do that. We've got eight sessions this year instead of the four we did last year. Four of them we've already got booked up on venues that hold 40 pounders, and then we're going to do four day ticket waters, which we know hold 40 pounders, and we're just going to try our luck, see if we can get on a decent peg. But yeah, like I said, we're buzzing to be back out and literally I'm set up now in my bivvy. Liam set his bivvy up. All that's left to do now is get the rods out. But as you know, I'm all the way up there in the cow field, so I better go and get my rods out. So Liam's got to get his three rods out. I'm going to get my three rods out now. Um, just a quick look at what I'm going to do on one of my rods, but we'll go more in depth tomorrow. I've got a Gemini Carp Tackle fluorocarbon leader down to a normal leg clip system. It's a turbo German rig where I've got a Parker Bates bottom bait boilie OG fish topped off with a fake maze that's going to pop it up, uh, critically balance it, and hopefully this is what can do the fish. But yeah, this is just one of my rods, but we'll go more in depth tomorrow. So I'm just going to get these out now on the spot, uh, put a trickler bait in over the top and see, see what it can do. Hopefully it gets a few fish, you never know. But uh, other than that, just get them out now and I'll catch up with you shortly. Right then, so that's the last of the rods out. Pete sent me a picture of a 45 pound common yesterday that came out around this time last year, end of March. Hopefully it makes a repeat appearance this year. Ah, right then, linear fisheries. I'm guessing if you're watching this video, you've either fished here or you've heard about it. And if you haven't, I recommend it. A massive complex in England, it's based in Oxford. Uh, it's got an on-site bait and tackle shop. It's got showers and toilets on site too. There's numerous lakes to go at, various fish sizes, uh, various stock levels. So it suits all kinds of fishing. So like today, we've already said we're on Hunt's Corner. Just a few facts about the lake. It's nine acres in size, it's got 10 swims, which gives you abundance of water in front of you. You're not arguing with anglers where you're fishing. Uh, stock wise, there's over 400 carp, few 40s to go at, numerous 30s and plenty 20s. It's the first time we both fished it, so we're not too clued up on it. 
but we have done a bit of research online as you do nowadays with these carp angling websites and Facebook and YouTube you can you can do a bit of a, a research before you come but after leading about from peg 10 I can tell you now there's, there's numerous gravel bars in front of you at different lengths uh, different sizes it's very silty in between each one I haven't come across much weed at the moment but that's probably this time of year I have read online it does get a bit weedy in the summer months and I've also heard about the crayfish I haven't witnessed anything yet because the rods have only been in there about an hour but for now just going to sit out now I'm going to do myself a cup of tea and have a snack because I'm starving we haven't stopped all day finally got the rods in and we can finally start to enjoy that carp fishing feeling where you're on the bank but yeah I'll update you soon and hopefully we can get a fish before the morning Feeling a bit confident because I found a nice spot. Whether they play ball, who knows. But anyway, I'm going to get a bite to eat. But for a short, fast snack, a little hack for you. Not so much a hack, but a you know a bit of advice. Get yourself to Lidl. Uh, in their fresh section, they have these vegetarian pizzas or tomato and stuff. But the vegetarian ones are really nice. Uh, I'm not vegetarian, but these are really good. Just throw that in the Ridge Monkey just to get a bit of a crisp on it. And I've got four of these and I'm going to smash all of them because I've got a big appetite at the moment after this long day we've been doing. Hold some up nice and warm and then have a nice little feast. A little bankside feast. Just add an aggressive liner on the middle rod. Positive signs. I mean, that would be mint. First episode of the series, first evening, bank of fish. Oh, I'd be over the moon with that. First time on the lake, I'd be absolutely over the moon to get a fish on the first evening. And that liner has just made me feel even more positive than I was. Liam's feeling quite confident, spoke to him on the phone. Uh, yeah, he seems quite confident, which is good. I think confident fishing is good fishing, but we'll see, how it, see if that changes in a couple of days if we haven't had anything, but yeah, good signs. And uh, yeah, the evening is closing in, so I'm gonna start settling down, packing everything into how it should be and uh, start having a chill out. But if you don't see me or Liam tonight, we'll see you in the morning. Good morning, just a little quick update for you guys. Um, no fish to report. Liam's had nothing to report to me other than he has heard a couple of fish show to his right. Myself, I haven't seen anything since I was two original shows at the start of the session, but I'm not too disheartened as uh, throughout last night, two or three occasions I've had savage liners. The left hand rod, the bobbing up pulled up towards the alarm and stayed there last night, but it was pitch black and I was in two minds to get it back out. But I gave the benefit of the doubt because I've got the tidy boom on and I know it's going to reset itself if it has been picked up and dropped. So anyway, first light, this morning I've got the left rod in to check if the bait's still on. The bait's still on, so I'm confident I was fishing. However, I've just wrapped it back up and I've got it back on the spot and I'm fishing again with three rods, confidently. But we're going to go into more in depth with our tactics on how we're approaching Hunter Corner this afternoon. So whilst I was just doing my beans and sausages, I just seen one show, finally. Mmm, silty, but it's where they are. Now I can go back and enjoy my sausage and beans. Sausage and beans. In this short video, I'm going to show you how to use a Gemini carp tackle tidy stems, where and when is best to use them, and also highlight the advantages to using this product. 
So first of all, take your rig of choice and one of the Gemini Carp Tackle tidy stems. I've opted for the O-ring version on this occasion. Take the loop on your rig, pass it through the O-ring section, fold it back round, hook and everything goes through the loop on the rig then. And then you're locked into place against the tidy stem. Then take your hook bait of choice. I've gone for a little yellow wafter. Attach your bait to your hook. And then the final stage before you start making your actual solid bag, take your lead, slide it over the top of the tidy stem. The tidy stem's coming over five millimeter or 5.75 millimeter diameter, which will suit any of your lead needs. In with the hook bait and the rig. Push the hook right, right down into the corner. Hook's kicked away from it the other side. Now just want to add a little bit of pellet just to lock that hook bait into place. Continue to fill the bag to just over halfway. We can dump the lead in. Use this as a bit of an opportunity to knock down some of them pellets and then just force it into the center of the bag. Then we'll continue with filling the bag up to about there. Pinch the top of the bag, get as much of the air out of it as you can. Once you've got it as tight as you think you can, turn the top of the bag around the tidy stem, take a length of PVA tape, wrap it around three or four times between your knees. Two, two knots, trim off your tag ends, tidy up the bit around the top of the stem. So there you have it, one solid bag tied up using the Gemini Carb Tackle Tidy Stem. One thing that I do want to point out is the stem itself is made from a fluorocarbon insert. It's super strong, 45 pound breaking strain, but also really, really flexible. The biggest advantage to that for me is fish safety. Obviously with that, the flexibility there in that it's not going to harm the fish in any way, shape or form. I'm just going to show you how to attach the Gemini Tidy Stems, the quick change bags to your main line. It's nice and simple. Create a big loop in the end of your line. The bag's going to have to pass through this to make sure it's big enough. Once you've found your size you want, pinch the two lines together. Create one initial loop, like so. And then the other loop wrap right in the back. And then you're going to push that one back through the front of the loop you've already made. And then once you pull that through, you're going to need to wet the knot then pull it tight. And there you have it. Once you trim the tag end off, you will have your loop ready to attach your quick chain solid bag. So, and there it is. Attaching your bag couldn't be any easier. So you pinch the loop you've already made, pass it through the top of the tidy stem, just like so. And then the loop, you want to pull it round and loop it round the bag. Just like so. And then once that's complete, pull the main line, and then yeah, you have it, solid bag. So where and when would I use a solid bag? For me, I'd chuck one of these out in absolutely any situation, but predominantly, when you turn up to a lake and you've got fish out in front of you, you want to get that bite quick, get one of these out in the lake before you start leading about and disturbing the area you can. Um, weed, to a certain extent, it'll sit over pretty much any weed that's out there, any silt on the bottom, you will 99% of the time be presented with a solid bag. So I'll fish with them over bait, I'll fish with them on their own, and they always tend to get me a bite. So at 11 and a half wraps from uh, on my bank, I have found a spot which is uh, a lot of gravel, but there is silt, but it's, it's predominantly gravel. So I've decided to put two rods there, like I've always said. Just gonna run you through the mix that I'm putting out there. Uh, it's just simple. It's just gonna be the Parker Bass OG Fish Boilies. Just a few of those. Also I'm gonna use some of the OG Fish Magic Dust. And nothing completes a mix without a bit of sauce.
So day two, and I'm just about to get all three rods out for the day and the rest of the, maybe the evening, unless I get a fish or I see anything show. But as of now, I'm gonna go with two turbo Germans on the spot that I found yesterday on the gravel area. So that's gonna be two turbo Germans, one's with a grain of corn and one's on a pink wafter. And the third one, I'm gonna fire over to the far bank and it's got a yellow pop-up on it, it's on a Ronnie rig. I know it's a bit silty over there every time I brought something back, so I've stuck a Ronnie rig on just to see if it sits on top. But yeah, there's my three rods, two on the spot, one on the far margin. Hopefully if we can get amongst some of these fish in Hunt's Corner. I haven't heard an alarm since we've been here, but that still doesn't put me off because it can switch on at any moment. Yeah, so fingers crossed we get amongst them. So we're coming into the second evening now and I just thought we'd give you a little bit of an update as to what's gone on through the day, which to be honest with you, Not a lot. isn't a great deal, yeah. is it? I've been sitting on my hands. I've seen one fish show in the margin again, so I've put one on its head and not to no avail. But yeah, I'm just sitting on my hands on the spot I've made. I'm gonna change up my tactics tomorrow if I don't have anything, but yeah. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, there's been, there's been little to no life out there at all. I, I think I may have saw a little subtle show earlier, but nothing's progressed so like pete said i'm going to be sticking with the same tactics which we will run through tomorrow it's been a little bit difficult filming wise this session because the pegs are so far apart yeah so i've reeled in just to come down to liam to do a little bit of camera work with him just to get him in the video otherwise he's been stuck up the cow fields on his own but yeah so i thought we'd give you an update i'm going to head back now in a minute and i'll get my rods back out and then have some burgers and then liam's going to head back up to the cow patch and <laughs> do whatever liam does but going forward <laughs> we are going to be doing a, a bankside burgers bit in the videos but again like yeah. we've said because the pegs are so far apart we're not really going to be able to do it this session we've got to find the right balance between fishing and recording and just trying to get that fish on the bank that's it we, for, for one of us for us to record something like that one of us have got to reel the rods in and yeah. at the minute we're blanking so as far as today goes that'll probably be it for me i think peter will probably give you a little bit of an update later maybe yeah i'll cook some burgers do a little yeah. night update if we don't get a fish you'll see me in the morning you'll see pete later Ciao for now Like we just explained earlier, this is something we'll be doing in future, future sessions. And we're going to call it Bankside Burgers, where we just try different burgers from different places and make our own burgers and just rate them at each session. So if you do recommend any good burgers, drop it in below so we can try them on the next session. Hopefully some of you uh, bank tramps know some good burgers. But yeah, so we're on to the second night and uh, still no fish, unfortunately. I'm not too disheartened. Like I've already said, because there's still time. And I've always said in the past, it only takes one minute to change the session. Could land a PB, so got to stay hopeful. Drop in a recommendation and tips, what you would have done in pegs nine and 10 on Hunt's Corner. And anybody who searches the video in the future can then click on the comments below and have a little look at your tips. But for now, these look pretty much, yep, these ain't far from being done. So I'm going to turn the camera off and I'm going to eat my burgers in peace and watch the water for a few hours because that's what carp fishing is all about. The moon's out tonight in full force and it looks stunning. So I'm going to eat my burgers under the moonlit lake. And hopefully the colder temperatures tonight and the clear sky above changes something for tonight and we can get one on the bank. But if not, I'll catch you in the morning. Right, so I am off the mark, but there is a slight twist to this tail. It's not what we've actually come for. But, oh, 
Oh, no, oh, just get all slow off my new coat. Yep, no, you do that. So it's not what we've come for, but it's a bit of confidence. Just to show the rigs are working and they're in the right place. This tension just picked me up on the left rod. 11 and a half wraps out on the gravel bar. Yeah. Whew, I mean, it's a, it's a wake up this morning, it's quite cold. <laughs> but yeah, I'll take it. It's got me off the mark for the tension squad. Hopefully I'll get the rod back out where it was and the carp will take it, but yeah. Confident the rigs are out there set now, so I can go to bed and hopefully Mr. Carp comes along. But yeah, slip this one back and get back in bed because it's quite it's quite cold out here. Probably not not any carp angler's dream of getting woke up at half twelve for a tench, especially when you're treading the water and the water goes over your wellies and you're freezing. So but other than that, it's definitely a good rig check. Sometimes I'm sat in bed and I'm thinking, am I actually presented as I think I am? And when you get a bite like that, it just confirms that you are presented and, you know, a carp can pick you up. So that's going to be a bit of confidence in the left-hand spot that I'm on. So I've just wrapped it up and I'm going to get back on that spot. And I'm going to get back in bed because it's nice, toasty and warm in there. Good morning, uh, no further updates with any fish unfortunately. I do think for car boys the lake's going to be a bit slow at the moment and I haven't heard any alarms off anybody who's turned up yesterday either. Uh, Liam hasn't reported anything back to me. I've been watching the water now since I got up earlier. Been there a few hours now and I haven't seen anything show at all. But uh, yeah, last night the Tench. The Tench come to the Tidy Boom Turbo German rig with a Parker Bates pink wafter. So yeah, that's what did me the fish last night. Lovely morning, a bit windy, um, but summer is on the way and the sessions will be more productive, I'm guessing. Other than that, we're going to pop up to Liam's from today just to see what he's doing on his three rods, just, uh, just to show you how he's approaching the lake and just discussing a bit further more tactics. But yeah, just going to wait for an indication now and then wait to move on that. Maybe a little bit of a change in width, we'll uh, spur them on a little bit. So now just clutching at straws, I think now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, any change in temperature and weather and wind, always possibility of mixing things up. So yeah, fingers crossed. Like I say, it only takes one bite, mate, and the session's made if you get one of the big ones. <sighs> but it is hard to stay hopeful, you know. But yeah, just got to do. So we're into dinner time on day three. I'm sure Peter already let you know it's been a quiet night. I've had more action this morning than I've seen so far though. The fellow opposite, he had an aborted run. I had a savage line around my middle rod. I'm just gonna get these back out now and then I'll explain exactly what I'm doing. That's the first rod out on the spot. I'm fishing two over a gravel bar. And then I've got one margin that I primed on the first day with a bit of bait. Not put a rod on that yet, but I'm going to today. Build up the confidence over a bit of free bait. With no rod in the water. So the rod that was out last night, I've woke up this morning, reeled them back in and one of them I'd got a chunk taken out of the um, out of the wafter from a crayfish. So I'm going to take it as a positive. If it's warm enough for the crayfish to be active, it's definitely warm enough for the carp to be active. And then for the third rod, annoyed at myself really because I was going to bring the baiting pole, I completely forgot it. It's literally just going to be a little underarm swing to the side. Double fake maze in this one just to cover all bases. Ooh, nice little drop as well. It's another 
good example of using a solid bag when and where I'd use it. I've done absolutely no lead work down that margin whatsoever. Just put a bit of bait over there, like I say, on day one. But I'm that confident that a solid bag will present wherever I throw it, so I know I'm fishing. And as with the other two rods, even more so with this one, the line is literally going to drop out of the end of the rod because I'm right tucked into the margin. I don't want to spook the fish in any way. Gemini Carp Tackle, Tidy Boom, the Turbo German Rig. The Turbo German Rig is a highly balanced bottom bait rig used for wafters and critically balanced baits. Offers consistent levels of presentation, the ability to reset after a aborted take and solid hook holds. And it's made from fewer carbon fused bond technology, so it's stronger than any conventional knot. And it has a light refractive index of 1.42, which is very similar to water, so once you are out there fishing, it's near enough invisible. It's 0.50 millimetres in diameter and it's got a 30 pound braking strain. They come in lengths of five and a half inches, seven inches and nine inches. But also you can head over to the website and they have a custom build section and you can design this boom to the length that you need. So that's just a few facts on the tidy booms and now I'm gonna explain on how to build one. It's nice and simple. All you'll need is your components. You'll need your anti-tangle sleeve, a choice of hook, heat shrink tube, a way of attaching bait over a micro ring swivel or a baiting screw and then a hook bead. So first of all, you want to take your hook, slide on a bit of heat shrink tube, just over the eye, and then we're going to attach the micro ring swivel off the boom through the eye of the hook, and then we're going to slide down the heat shrink tube, and once that's in place, we're going to heat it up with a bit of steam from the kettle. Then we're going to attach our method of attaching bait. I've opted for a bait screw on this occasion. So once I've slid the bait screw on, on the hook, I'll put the hook bead on just to secure it in place. I usually slide the hook bead right around the hook so it's in line with the point of the hook. Down to the other end of the boom, I've added an anti-tangle sleeve just to aid the kicking away with the fluorocarbon. And now that's all complete, your German eye carp tackle turbo German rig is complete. You can opt to put putty on just below the hook if you wish, just might aid in a turn of the hook, but it works perfectly fine without it. But yeah, there it is in all its glory, such simple, effective, but absolutely solid fishing, and it will put many a fish on the bank. So a slight change of plan. I've gone with two solid bags at 21 wraps to the opposite bank, the far margin. And then this one I'm even on a tidy boom on a Ronnie rig with a 14 mil pop-up, washed out pink. And I'm gonna place that over the baited area I started on the first day, see if they've moved in. So we're keeping this rig nice and simple. It's straight out the packet, a tidy rig. So I'm just gonna attach it on now and get it on that baited spot. Hopefully, I can pick one up and save myself from this session because I really do want to catch one now. Come on. So that's all three rods out now for the rest of the session. They won't be coming back in until I pack up or I get a fish. Um, the, say it's the last night and it's, it's, it's got to dig deep now. Uh, the bailiff come around earlier and he was just explaining how the old complex isn't fishing very well at the moment. So, But, you know, when it kicks off at linear, it kicks off. So that could be tonight. So I'm trying to stay hopeful. The two solid bags, the 21 wraps to the far margin went out really well. And the 11 and a half wraps on the left rod to the spot where I put bait on the first day, that went made with a dunk onto the gravel. So all happy with all three rods, how they went out and where they are. Just could rob the cart play ball. Yeah, but I'm trying to stay hopeful, and I really want one. I really want a carp, especially on this first episode back of this series. So as you can see, the final evening is drawing in now and today has been as productive as the first three days have. Absolutely nothing. Um, yeah, big, big really part, tough going, hasn't it? Big part of carp fishing, I guess. But yeah. uh, 
You do get nice scenes like the moon's out again in full force. It looks absolutely stunning. Uh, it is beautiful, yeah. It's beautiful. Is there anything on your swim? Nothing. <laughs> there's, nothing, there's nothing to talk about in my stream. <laughs> We've been here what now? We've been here since Thursday. It's now Saturday night, and I've literally not seen a single sign of a car in Peg Nine. Sometimes they come out the blue, though, don't they? Well, that, that, I'm still Hopefully. hopeful. Yeah. It, it does feel at the minute like it's a needle in an haystack type situation. I've just got to hope that a wandering fish comes over and just fancies it because I, I really don't think the they're going for it in here yet. It's it's an awkward time of year. You sort of, you've come in, you're coming out of winter and into spring. I don't think the fish really know what they're doing. So what chance have we got? Yeah, the temperatures have dropped again, so it could go against us. Could go for us. Who knows? Mm. It's a bit of a change might mix things up. But I was open. We've had, we had a bit of stormy weather today, really, and with the high winds and and a couple of little rain shows. I was hoping that might spur them into action a little bit. The, the air pressure's been dropping, but I was toying with the idea of only having one rod on my baited area in the middle and sticking a solid bag over on the far margin, a bit like what Pete's done. But I think if they do turn on, which they're due to, I would have thought at some point over the coming days, I'd rather my rods be on, on a baited area. So they're on the dance floor. That's our gnarly update concluded. Yeah. Hopefully we can get one in the night. Not I another, think... not another tench. I, 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 I yeah. mean, I'd, I'd, yeah, I'd already want another. Tench, uh, in all fairness, honest. mate, I'd take a tench at this point. I think I'd take a broom, and that's saying summer. Yeah, but <laughs> not for me. It was freezing. No, yeah. so that'll either be. You'll see us in the morning, with the conclusion, ending the video, or you'll see us in the night holding up a big fat dirty carp. So we'll see you in the morning. <laughs> <laughs>so it's not the 40 pound elusive carp we're after in this series but it's a carp and it's what i asked for so yeah buzzing to be off the mark this one fell to the left hand rod on the 11 half wraps on the gravel area with the bait fell to the gemini tidy rig the ronnie rig 14 mil washed out pink pop-up that saved me a blank <laughs> buzzing to get the first carp of the series though but i'm quickly going to get her back and get that rod back on that baited area because it, this is the time at night it seems to be feeding so yeah, we'll get it back and get this rod back on the spot. But yeah, buzzing to be off the mark. Let's go get some bigger ones. Right then, thought I'd just show you the rig that caught me the fish. I'm just gonna get this wrap back up to 11 and a half wraps, get back on the baited area, and hopefully we can get amongst some more. Good morning. Uh, just a quick morning update. Uh, we've got about a couple hours left in the swim. Uh, the booking times end at 9 and the new booking start at 10, so you have to be up by 9 o'clock on Hunt's Corner. Uh, but that gives us just over an hour and a half, I think, left with the rods in. Let's try and force one more. But yeah, we're going to start slowly packing down, sorting all the stuff, because it's a bit of a walk to the car park and I've got plenty of stuff with me. So, yeah, we're going to start doing a slow pack down, but leaving the rods in, let's say, just try and force one more. But yeah, buzzing with that one last night to save the blank. And uh, really looking forward to getting stuck into it this year. And with that, our 72 hour session here at Hunt's Corners, done and dusted. Absolutely nothing for me. It's been really quiet. I've not seen any signs, any fish showing. It has been tough. Nothing at all. But Pete's managed to save the day with a little and last night. I managed to get one on the bank. But uh, yeah, episode one of the series one is now out the way. And we're going to be on to the next one, episode two, which is at RH Fisheries The Mere. So make sure to subscribe to Gemini Carp Tackle and Carp Interest and follow the journey on this series. Liam and Pete from Free UK Forces.